All right, thank you. Uh, thank you all for attending. And yeah, so here's a project. Yeah, we did on implementing client side security for the cli climate uh, special interest group fabric application. So um, I am, my name is Bertrand Review. I have come from uh, actually the research background at a think tank uh, based in Saudi Arabia. Um, and this is work was done for the blockchain carbon accounting, which is a hyperledger hyper labs project. Um, yeah, so essentially what we were trying to achieve in this project was being able to assign fabric transactions. So, uh, you know, a private uh, blockchain network using private keys that are stored externally. So that's not on the, say the peers, the, the peer servers that are within the fabric network. So really providing client side security. Um, the technologies we use, so obviously fabric, um, building on the utility emissions channel, I'm um, built in Node.js and type, TypeScript um, for the BCA project. Um, we also were considering working with a technology called Trust ID, which is basically fabric, uh, hyperledger fabric chain code, but I'll talk about later um, why we abandoned that. Um, uh, we also integrated our final solution into Hyperledger Cactus. Now, this wasn't a requirement. Um, it could, could have been implemented separately, but Hyperledger Cactus is a useful integration tool for cross-chain, cross-blockchain or DLT compatibility. So we actually had a PR and, and implemented our final solution, which was a fabric, a new identity provider for fabric to manage these external client, um, client key signing. Um, we developed uh, to manage uh, this, this uh, new identity provider, we developed a WebSocket server, which is basically just, just a Node.js server built in TypeScript for um, handling WebSocket upgrades, the uh, identity. Um, finally, we had a client wallet. Originally, again, we were, we were going to find a way to use MetaMask. Um, and this is where the Trust ID came in, where MetaMask um, would be connected to Fabric through Trust ID um, for managing different DIDs, like those that are held in one's wallet. Uh, I'll explain again later why that was abandoned. Um, and we ended up just building a Node.js Node server-side WebSocket client. Um, and finally, we used Docker to containerize some of the system components for testing and deployment. Um, so yeah, the project objectives, as, you know, as I stated, were to enable external signing of Fabric transactions. Um, this figure on the, on the right of the screen just basically runs their decision tree for why you would want to use this kind of technology or why or why not. Um, do you need to score, store keys on or off you know, your, your, peer, your peer network? Um, can you manage a central, a central solution? Actually, uh, one of my peer, peer mentees, um, Pertam, who presented lot, uh, two days ago, um, developed a similar solution to this, but using Vault, which is a central server-based solution for managing keys and, and key signing. Um, or do you really want to take your keys offline, which was the solution we were trying to develop um, here? And finally, if you want additional security, perhaps using an HSM so that your keys that are held by the client can never be exposed. Um, uh, they're sort of contained within this hardware device. Um, so that was our objectives. The object second objective of the project was really how do we implement um, these custom X509 certificates? Um, so the keys are, the certificate is stored without the keys um, for, the, for use in the network. Um, and finally integrating this into the blockchain carbon accounting uh, application. Um, so yeah, the, the first deliverable that we set out for this project was really to integrate trust ID with um, the Fabric Utility Emissions channel um, to access like an external client wallet like MetaMask. Um, now we drop this and I'll explain in a bit why that was the case, but let me just get onto the other deliverables. So what we moved on to was building this identity, this uh, identity server slash provider for Fabric um, using WebSocket and was packed as the Cactus feature. The third deliverable was um, yeah, doing integration, um, this WS, X509 uh, credential type or provider, the uh, identity provider credential type that we created into the project. Um, and finally, getting this WS wallet. So this server-side Node.js wallet um, set up to handle the uh, external key, key, key storage. So secure, secure storage of the private, the client's keys um, and the, the signing interacting with the, these fabric transactions. And of course, documentations with the justification and this you know, decision trees for why we use such a system that I showed above or earlier. Um, so yeah, getting back to this uh, sort of abandoning the first uh, deliverable of using trust ID. So the first phase of the internship, so the first couple of weeks or month, uh, quickly realized that th this solution was not ideal fit for our actual objective. 
So the reason was Trust ID did not directly solve the problem that we had, which was using Fabric with offline private keys. It actually just sort of had a workaround because you were actually still, the Trust ID chain code still required these on-peer um, uh, keys. You're just adding additional key layer, for example, um, with a wallet like MetaMask that was bridged using Trust ID. The other thing is MetaMask itself, this was just a side point, um, uses a type of digital um, signature algorithm that's not recognized by Fabric because it's not NIST approved. That's the SCCP 256K1 algorithm. Um, so we learned, I learned how to develop and implement a custom identity provider to, uh, you know, as, as a full-scale solution for this problem of taking the keys um, uh, and putting the keys into the hands of the external client. Um, built a solution that, in my, in my opinion, can improve security for permission blockchain like, um, like Fabric for, you know, these permissioned entities that are using it. Um, and I personally developed a deeper appreciation for test-driven deployment and creating, you know, nice uh, TS code, TypeScript code. Um, I'm not a computer science background. I do a lot of programming, but this experience was really enriching. I learned a lot. Um, so the output was finally was this WDS ident identity. So no digestive server that creates these new um, identity sessions for the external client. That is the WS wallet, which is the crypto key store. Um, we also dockerized the, uh, the servers so that could be integrated with the BC that could be set up to run with the blockchain carbon accounting app. Um, and of course, there was a PR that we had approved to, to Cactus to set up this, um, this connector for Fabric um, with the WSX509 credential or identity type. Um, so just final recommendations for future work, possibly extending features of the WS wallet. Um, the certificates themselves that are created when you're enrolled with Fabric are stored in um, either with Fabric or in a third party. For example, Vault, which is a you know, secure cloud-based storage. One could actually just um, store the certificates with the, uh, the external client's wallet itself. It's just an option. Adding additional client uh, security features like approval for multiple transaction requests when you open a new WebSocket session um, and potentially using other frameworks, uh, HSM integration and potentially using other frameworks apart from a Node.js server for WS Wallet. For example, putting it in, implementing it as a browser extension, similar to how MetaMask is set up, or you know, within a desktop app or even a, um, a mobile app. Um, my uh, mentee, uh, uh, Xi Shen, on, uh, on this project has actually taken the tools we've built and implemented it into this open taps um, implementation of the BCA project. So I can just show you quickly. This is showing someone enrolling as an admin, and this. Um, you know, this screen here is basically showing the WS wallet I set up, which is asking the client, this is the external client, to input a password to unlock the key that they have stored so that they can interact with this uh, blockchain carbon accounting application, um, you know, expressed here in this open tabs implementation using the BCA API, the blockchain carbon accounting API. Um, yeah, something else, this is just a new uh, side point, is you wouldn't, you don't really have to use Cactus to set up a WSX509 provider. We just did that because it's a very, it's a great package. It's really useful, but some projects don't use Cactus. So it'd be cool to have these identity provider type, you know, accessible for those, those type of projects. Um, finally, my, some major insight gain, uh, and I think this is a great quote that sums up, you know, a lot of the insights that, you know, some of the different mentees have, have mentioned was, um, don't spend too much time uh, on the solution. Think a lot about the problem, all right? And this is relevant in a lot of domains, um, but what I've realized in the open source community, it can be incredibly important to think this way because there are so many solutions to a given problem and you wanna avoid um, settling on one before the problem and outcome is well-defined. Um, this wasn't you know, necessarily a huge issue for this project. Yes, we did have the, um, you know, the challenge of figuring out if trust ID and uh, MetaMask were really suitable tools. Fortunately, uh, some of the men mentors, particularly Kamash Nagar, um, really helped point that out um, and point me in the right direction to look for a better solution. And also um, one of the mentees, the, my peer mentees, um, Pritzim, who presented two days ago, was also really, really helpful in this project. So the number one skill I would take away from this experience for the future is really exhaust the challenges to a solution before you start implementation. So yeah, thank you to Sai, Kamlesh, also, Peter from Cactus, who, who really helped give some detailed review of the WS identity um, system that I set up um, on that PR. And of course, Pritam, uh, I don't think you're on the call, but AK Zucker, thanks for your help. And last but not least, Linux Foundation for making this happen. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Bertrand, for uh, presenting on your work and your journey of, uh, you know, deciding, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, really, yeah, spending a lot of time thinking about the problems rather than the solutions. Uh, so that's really, really, really uh, insightful feedback. Thank you. And I do see, uh, Su, can you come off of mute? Do you have anything to add? Or I also see... Uh, yes. Hi. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, no, I think this was a really great solution that in the end Bertrand came up with. We tried a lot of different options. Um, and I think at some point, maybe we should separate this out into its own Hyperledger Labs project. Because I think a lot of the other people working with Fabric could uh, use this for client side authentication and signing. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other mentors who would like to add? Yeah, I mean, so actually I want to, because uh, in, the, in, the, in the fabric, this uh, uh, client side identity is very challenging and, uh, and this is a really challenging project where uh, Betan actually really put lots of effort and uh, co mentee uh, other mentee like Pritam Singh actually mm -hmm. really done the very well job. And uh, a kind of integrating the hyperledger characters and then um, adding this web socket layer for the identity layer. I think this is really interesting. Works comes out of this uh, mentorship project. Thank you. Uh, 